she good. You guys know what an etch a sketch is, right? Everybody ever heard of an etch a sketch? Etch a sketch. It's like this little, and it's got these two little knobs at the bottom, and it basically was blank. And if you start turning the knobs, a little thing kind of plasters these little particles onto the screen. And you turn it over and shook it. Screen goes blank. A while back, I actually found some stuff on the internet that's like virtual etch sketches. They were kind of nifty. I haven't looked at it for a while. The reason I bring this up now is um, it's got radio or TV with etch sketch. I have a shirt that's Etcher Sketch, which is like a hand coming out drawing itself. You ever seen that thing by MC Escher? No? The hand drawing itself? Have you ever seen that? Um, if I am turning these dials, one of them is the up and down motion, and the other one is left and right motion. So it's exactly like X and Y. Is that cool? So how fast is the little thing moving if I'm turning both dials at the same time? I really want you to think about it. So if I'm only turning one dial, let's say this is the left and right, so this is the X, and this is the Y, the up and down. Somebody with me. So if you're trying to draw some circle, that always frustrated the shit out of me. Oh, it's the wrong way. Shit. Um, so if I only turn this guy, it is its speed alone which determines how quickly it's the, the, the little, um, what do you want to call it? The little stylus is moving. It's like a little pen inside. It paints the inside. Of so, so what's this? If X is the position on the screen, of course, just like an XY plane, what is the speed of this? What's the speed in symbols? Not like a number. So it's seven meters per second. In symbols, what's the speed? Dx, dt. I like. And what is actually creating that function is my hand as I turn that knob one way or the other, how quickly I do it, how slowly I do it. Are you, are you guys with me a little bit? And of course this guy, if I start turning him alone, it would be dy dt, right? So obviously, hopefully, obviously, the, the true overall speed of this pen is going to be some combination of those two things. Does that make sense? I like it. I like it. So for example, let's say that I am graphing out a circle on this thing. Let's say it's got radius 1. What would that function be? I'm going to plot out a circle, radius 1. What is that formula for the circle of radius 1? What's the? X squared plus y squared. Yeah, x squared plus y squared plus 1. Now, here's the thing. This is, this is going to feel a lot like um, implicit differentiation, because it is. The difference here is, what am I taking derivative with respect to? What am I doing taking the derivative with respect to? I'm talking about speeds here. So it's with respect to time. So both of these are chain rules now. Because there's a dx, dt, there's a dy. I'm not doing d by dx. Implicit would be d by dx, and that's why there's never any x prime, because that would be dx, dx. This is one. Are you guys with me? So that's the difference. Implicit is there's an x and a y, and I'm doing d by dx. So the only thing that shows up is y prime or dy, dx. Here, I'm doing... There's an x and a y, and I'm taking the derivative with respect to time, some third variable behind the scenes. So how would this work then? How would I take the derivative of this? I'll do this side. Okay. I did half. It would be 2x times dx dt. I didn't leave myself in that room. Plus... 2y times dy dt equals 0, right? And I can divide by 2. Now, obviously, do you see how it's not going to be the same type of problem 
as implicit. Implicit was like solve for dy dx. Here, I can't really solve. I got two rates. In fact, do you see how the rates have a relationship? Of course they do, because I started with the x and the y related. So when I take derivatives, the rates I get are related, hence the term related rates. I like it. I like it. So I can divide by 2 at least. So it's x times dx dt plus y times dy dt must equal 0. But I'm on this circle. It's kind of neat. Okay, so if I, I, I'd have to tell you how quickly I'm turning that dial and how quickly I'm turning that dial. And then I've got to tell you, you know, I've got to give you enough information so you can solve for the one thing left. That's how a lot of these problems are going to be. They're going to tell you, well, I'm turning that dial at uh, three whatever's per second, three clicks per second, and whatever. It's got to give you enough information to plug it into there. I like it. Let's get away from the etch sketch example. It's nice for that. I really want you to understand that the screen is truly an XY plane. And as I turn that, it's just going through all these points. But what's controlling it is this third thing, this time, this how quickly I'm wrote, it is determining where it ends up. So you've done some parametric work in the past, right? So it's sort of like that. They're both controlled by some function of time. How are we doing so far? Okay, okay, good. So let's try some classic problems out. I got a couple of handouts. One of them's very basic, and the other one's what I call a, a deep analysis. It's like, holy shit. So let's say, let's take, um, let's take a couple right out of here. Yeah, hello. You pump an air into a spherical balloon. Um, at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius increasing when the diameter is 50 centimeters? So tell me, uh, what's the main formula I'm going to use for this? What's the formula before I do derivatives or anything? What is the what's the main idea up here? I'm pumping air into the spherical balloon. So what is changing over time? Volume. Okay, I like it. So what's the volume of a sphere? Four thirds pi r cubed. All right. <laughs> it's like coming strong in the course. Thunderbolt and lightning. Um, what is this in symbols? So, so look what I'm doing. I'm picking apart the problem. I'm saying, okay, what part tells me what function I'm going to use? What what equation I'm going to use? Okay. What about the, the, the numbers they give me? What's the symbols that go along with those numbers? So this number here, what does it discuss in English? It's the how quickly the, the air is being pumped in, but, but now related to the geometry of this problem. What, 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 what is this related to? The change in, you can look at the units. Yeah, so the top is going to be the change in volume. And of course, that's per second. So it's dv dt is 100, right? Screw the units for a minute. And then they tell me diameter is 50. Well, that's sort of useless in a way, but at least because there's no diameter, and I don't want to change this thing to have a diameter in it. Of course, more easily, I can just say if the diameter is 50, then the radius is 25. So I know dv dt. I know r. And what is it they're asking me about? What's the symbol for the thing they're asking me about? 
What about the radius? What's the symbol for what they're asking me about? How fast is radius increasing? So they're asking me for d r d t. That's what they're asking. Me. So identify the things they tell you. Give them symbols. You know, the true symbols for what they represent related to the function you're going to use. And then identify what the hell they're asking you for. That's your first step. And this is a step that a lot of people just kind of skip and then they're like, what the shit do I do now? Um, well, now I've got the relationship between radius and volume, but I need a relationship between the change in radius and the change in volume. So, of course, I just do what here? Take a derivative. I'll do this one. Nope. You bring up a good point. Never plug numbers in when you're about to take a derivative. Because if I plug a number in there, the derivative is going to be zero. This is going to become a constant. Yes. That is the formula for a volume of a sphere. I like it. And I know some of you guys are looking at me like, how the shit should I know that? And I'm like, well, you really should. But um, I can't remember this form, this book. Sometimes, nope, this doesn't give you shit. Here we go. Reference pages in the back. They give you volume of a sphere, surface area of a sphere. Something very interesting. Uh, Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. If this is V, what's dV dr real quick? What would dV dr be? 3 would come down. It's 4 pi r squared. Uh, 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 holy shit. Right? The change in volume per radius will, is the same as the surface area. Real quick word about that. Are you guys all kind of with me? In fact, what's the, uh, what's the um, area of a circle? Pi r squared. And what's the derivative of pi r squared with respect to r? And that is the circumference, right? And that's just the 2D analog of this 3D thing. Are you guys semi with me? If I had a, a sphere and I put a little thing of tape all around it, right, evenly. Are you guys with me? I just tape, put tape around the outside of it, evenly. It's very, very, very thin tape. How much does the volume of that increase would be equal to the surface area of the balloon? Because that's basically what the tape is. It's the surface area. So if I have a if I have a circle and I put tape all around the outside of it, the area will increase by a little tiny bit. How much? By the circumference. So that's what this and its derivative being the circumference means. if I, How much would the area change with a small change in radius uh, by the circumference? It's like putting a piece of tape on that outer edge. It will change by that little bit. Okay. Either you get that or you get It's a very interesting uh, uh, realization. Enough of that. That's all sides that you don't need to understand at all. If you do, that's, that's much better. Um, now here I'm taking the derivative with respect to time, right? why I want to do that on the side. With really respect to time, it's going to start off the same way. The 3 is going to come down. That's r squared, but now it's times what? Times dr dt, chain rule. Vol volume is a function of time. Radius is a function of time. So they both have to have a chain rule piece. And now that you've been nice to yourself and you identified everything, you just got to plug the shit in. What goes here? 100. 4 pi, the radius, 25. Times, and this is what I want to know, right? This is what I got to solve for. dr dt is now a variable that I'm trying to solve for. You guys get a feel for this. This is basically how every related rates problem works. Now, of course, some of them have multiple layers and stuff. They can get harder, of course, but this is the fundamental idea. Start with the basic function in, uh, relating all the variables, and then take a derivative. That's related rates now. And then you just got to solve. 
four times 25 is 100, so that cancels, and then I get a 25 left, right? And then I divide by 25 pi, I get one over 25 pi. And what would the units be on that? Yep, centimeters per second. you understand this step? Is everybody cool with me just identifying stuff, right? Where they ask me symbols and what they tell me symbols. Why do I do that? To make sure I have enough stuff, number one, when I plug in everything I know and be able to plug stuff in I know in the right place. And then I go, oh good. The only thing I don't know is what they ask me. Okay, good. And then you're like, I'm on the right track. There's not some other side work I've got to do to figure out some other thing. And then you just solve the shit, right? Now, how did I solve? 4 times 25 is 100 divided by 100. What's left? 25 pi divided by 25 pi. So DRDT is 1 25th pi centimeters per second. Are you guys all right? Yeah, are you guys? What's up? Are you worried because it just looks gross? No. Like, okay, so you did a DV over DR, and then I changed the DV over DT. Okay, okay. I'm sorry about it's that. Okay, this was problem. completely on the side, yeah. showing you the relationship between volume and surface area, and explaining why that, trying to explain why that relationship exists. Because as you learn calculus, you should start realizing things like this. When you look up the formula, it's like, wait a minute, the derivative of this is this. Why is that? Which is a really good question. I would hope to God people would ask themselves or ask me or something, not go, oh, that's bad for you, just weird shit out. There's got to be some reason. And then we do the dr dt because like implicit differentiation. Yes. Okay. Both volume and radius, if I'm pumping air in, both are changing. Okay. I don't know how they're changing explicitly. They didn't give me v of t. They didn't tell me how the volume is changing over time. So I've got to take a chain rule piece, right? And this is just directly dv dt, but r is a function of time. So when I take this guy's derivative with respect to time, Chain rule. I'm not doing with respect to R, am I like I was over here? I'm doing with respect to time, so the chain rule's gonna show up. Thankfully, and you quickly realize when you made your mistake, when you know that's what they're asking for, if it doesn't even show up in your equation, a mistake has been made. That will help you not forget the chain rule piece, right? So in this one, you, you, you're always gonna get that all the variables have to be over dt as you take the derivatives, because they're all going to be functions of time. I like it. How are we doing? Is that, how's that going? You know there's got to be some relationship between the volume and the radius, because they're both increasing over time. There should be some kind of relationship. Do you notice how if I put a different at a different radius, then this would be different, right? Because as the radius gets larger, then, and, and the volume's getting larger, then they're changing at, at slightly different rates. So, so at the point when the radius is 25 centimeters, the radius is changing by this much. All right, all right, I like it. Uh, let's try another one that's a little more involved. That was a nice baby step. Oh, this one's, this one's really, okay. This was a nice, slightly larger step. So we got what I want there. Take this, yes, okay. They love, they love cones. You'll notice this as you're doing these problems. A water tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone. Uh, with base radius 2 meters and height 4 meters. So this radius here is 2 meters, height 4 meters. Obviously drawn to scale by Master Artist Jeff. Um, where'd it go? Here it is. If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of two cubic meters per minute,
Find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three meters deep. So now, now watch the extra little thing that I have to draw here. So I want to draw kind of like a cross section in time. So I'm I'm pumping water into this sucker. There's water. There's this purple water that's coming down. Let's see if the blue work. There's this blue water. It's always nice pumping in at that rate. So at some time, it's at this level here. Now, how tall is that? We don't know, but what's a really, really, really good letter to use for that? H. H. You could use D for depth. Why does D suck? Because then it's D, 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 T. Oh, holy shit. Uh, so we use H. And then this has its own little baby. I'm not, it's not an R, it's a little thing. What do you want to call that? Well, I mean, what are you going to call that? That's going to make sense that it's R. The radius of the water circle that's made. Are you guys with me? Become an arc. All right, you're done, Blue. Okay, so this is the extreme. Once it's all full, R would be two. This is R at just some time. Some time T, it's just R. You guys, let me stop there for a second. I like it. All right. Uh, in terms of everything, plus, of course, we have the overriding idea of the volume. This, of course, would be what in units? What, you, what would the, uh, I mean, sorry, the symbols? What would the symbols be for this? And what's the meters cubed is? Volume. So it's dB per minute. DVDT. So DVDT equals 2. I know that. I know that it's 3 meters deep. So that's H. It's 3. And it's asking me to find the rate at which the water level is rising. And if the water level is rising, the rate at which it's rising, so what what variable does that have to do with the change in h, the change in height? I like it. So they're asking me for dh dt at a time when the height is 3. Okay. You guys are going to love this. So we know the volume of a, of a cylinder. What's the area of the base there? Let's say this is R, this is H. What's the area of the base? Pi R squared. So it's like penny stacked up, right? Or I used to say, I used to say records. But and then CDs. Um, stacked up. So how, what would the total volume be? Well, it'd be how many of these little circles are there? There's H of them. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Now you're saying to yourself, I don't see a cylinder over there, Jeff. Old oh, man, you got to pay attention to your own picture there, buddy. But then any time, now, now I'm about to say something very strange. This is a pyramid. This is a really weird pyramid. A pyramid is a prism, which means a repeated shape. So if I have a, a, a rectangular box, so this is a prism where the repeated shape is a rectangle. Are you with me? And I take the corners and take them all to a point on the top. I have just created a pyramid. Now that looks more like a pyramid, right? So I'm very proud of this. That you can really see it, can't you? You know, like, that wasn't you that just did that. It looks like shit, but you can still see it. This, if I take all the corners, which 
would be the whole thing of the circle and take them to a point. Let me do it the same way. There you go, John. Take them to a point. So, of course, this is all the way around. It's going to that point, right? Like a little paper cup. With me. That's still a pyramid. So the idea is, if I do that, if I chop all this shit off, I lose two-thirds of it. So what's left is one-third of it. So the volume of the cone would be one-third pi r squared h, one-third of the cylinder that I cut it out of. Unfortunately, I know that a ton of you have never heard that before in your life, which is sad. Some of you maybe have. Have you heard of this? Yes. Some of you go, okay, good. I love it. Some of you guys are like, sounds neat. I would have loved to know that before. That's why there's one-thirds in some of these formulas. Okay, so that's the formula I'm working with here, right? Volume equals one-third pi r squared h. So, of course, what am I going to do with this to start matching it? And now, now here's the problem with this. Pro if you start to do this, what really sucks about this? What's in this? There's volume. Okay, that's nice. There's radius and there's height. Do I give a shit about the radius? Is there anything about the radius? I really don't. In fact, do you see how this would be a product rule and I'd have to know dr dt? Do you know anything about dr dt? You could actually do it this way. You could figure out dr dt based on the other changes and all that. It would be so much better if I could just get rid of this stupid extra letter. And radius and height are related. Do you guys see why they love cones? Because they make triangles. You see related triangles, similar triangles up there. Yes. So R is to H, for example. R is to H as 2 is to 4. This little triangle is similar to this big triangle. You can always make a proportion out of the sides. Can't I solve for R now so I can eliminate R in my, in my equation? This is the kind of thing that's going to happen in this yeah. Aw, so you guys are making a face like you just ate some old burrito. R equals one half H. Is that cool? Soak it in. Whenever you see a cone problem, you're going to look for this kind of thing. That's why they love this problem, because it's a very simple little proportion way of eliminating one of your values, right? <laughs> So now I can rewrite the volume formula as one third pi times one half h squared times h. Or better yet, one fourth times one third is one twelfth pi times h squared h is h cubed. Sometimes you always have this step where you identify uh, what they tell you with the symbols for that thing and what they ask you and the symbols for that thing. That's one step. But you might have a step where you have to figure out a relationship between two variables. How are these variables related? So I can eliminate one of them. Because this is single variable calculus. Calc 3 is multivariable calculus. You don't want to be there yet. All right. Can you guys finish this out? Some of you guys are like, I have no idea what just happened. So here's the formula we're using. That's the one that relates volume and height, because that's the only shit I care about. And of course, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to take a derivative of this and start plugging stuff in. slowly start to catch up to you. So 
what you guys are getting for all right the three would come down one fourth now pi h squared dh dt and you know you're on the right track because you know this you know this and they ask you for this so, ah see how it's, you know, it's just so satisfying you're like oh, okay okay i feel pretty good got what they're asking me i got all that <laughs> they gave me then i just got plug and shut Two. I don't think they were that evil here. Sometimes, no, I don't think they were that. Uh, one fourth pi h is three, and then we're trying to solve for dh dt. So multiply by four, eight divide by nine pi, right? So you get dh dt equals eight over nine pi, right? Eight over nine pi meters per minute. Now let me add, let me ask you. Um, let me see how much was it. Yeah. Okay. What is the uh, what is the volume at um, I don't want to say this. Yeah, okay. What's the volume at uh, 2.5 minutes? And the volume at... Uh, I'll screw that. Let's just do volume at 2 minutes and volume at 3 minutes. How would I, if I just ask you that, do you see how that's not too bad? Let's see, do they give us enough? Well, all right, let's not get into that. Let me, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. I already got one set up asking you that kind of question. It's a little bit it's more straightforward. Don't get thrown off by the title of this. I don't know why I call it. Uh, 